So yesterday we started with uh, HTML tables, and after that uh, we discussed uh, any other components, images, right? Images we discussed, and uh, now today we want to go with uh, some other things. Okay, so today we will discuss about block level tags and inline tags. Okay, so what are the block level tags? What are the inline tags we need to understand? So block level tags, basically a tag which is occupied, which is occupied full width of the page. Full width of the page is called a block level tag. Is called a block level tag. Okay, inline tags. Inline tags basically a tag which is not occupy full width of the page is called inline tag. The tag uh, which will not occupy which will not occupy full width of the page. Full width of the page is called inline tag. Okay, so let's try to understand what is the block level tag, what is the inline tag through the paint. For example, uh, this is my HTML web page. This is my HTML web page. In HTML web page, there are multiple tags. There are a lot of tags. All tags are predefined. You know that. So some tag which is occupying full width of the page. Some tag which is not occupying full width of the page. For example, I have the content for the first tag. I have content for the first tag like uh, hello. I have some content for the first tag called hello. The same content which is available for the second tag. The same content which is available for the second tag, same hello. But here you see. Hello is basically occupying the first hello is occupying full width of the page, but the second the two tags are not occupying full width of the page. It is taking in the same line. All the all the tags which are going to be taking in the same line. The content is very less. It is like a button. It is like a button. So these buttons are actually not occupying full, full width of the page. These elements are called inline elements, and this element is called block level. A tag which is occupying full width of the page is called a block level element. It is blocking the total row, and some tag which is not blocking the complete row, it is which is taking based on the content. Your content is this much, that much space only takes. The content is this much, that content that much space is going to be allocated. That is called inline tag. Block level tags and inline tags. See by by writing the tags, then you can understand which is the block level tag, which is the inline tag. See, all paragraphs are block level tags. All headings are block level tags. All list items are block level tags. Okay, and even though, even the tables tables also block level tags when you have the content the, the, it basically hundred percent that is block level only. Really. Okay, let me go and try to explain uh, about the block level tags and inline tags. See, for the block level tag, the basic example is division. For inline tag, basic example is span. Both are containers. Div is a container. Span is a container. Container is kind of box. Container is a kind of bucket, which can able to hold multiple elements or which can able to hold some kind of text and all. Div is a container, even though span is a container. But both are both are containers. But div is block level. Span is inline. Div is occupying full width of the page, even though you have a smaller content, but it will occupy full width of the page. Even in the span, span is having a smaller content. It will take only that much space on top of the particular browser. It will not occupy full width of the page. That is a inline element. Okay, let me try to go with a one simple example. Then you can able to understand uh, which is the block level, which is the inline at all. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, kind of tags. Kind of tags. Dot HTML. The program name is kind of tags. Dot HTML. So the first one I want to take a division. 
division i'm just saying that uh, hollow just hollow then i'm taking something like a span see without having background colors i cannot be able to see which is block level which is in line that is the reason i'm just taking multiple multiple spans here you know and one more span i'm taking how are you no okay. so i'm taking multiple spans here but divisions i'm taking multiple divisions also one division is hello one division is how are you now let me write down the style sheet without writing the style sheet you cannot able to understand which is block level which is in line can you see that first hello and first how are you he is taking complete row but we cannot able to understand it is taking a complete row or not but the second or third one hello hello how are you is going to be taking in the same row but without having the bgs without having some backgrounds you cannot able to take you cannot able to understand where that particular element got occupied on the top of the page that is a very reason what i want to do is i want to take a style sheet for that let me take a style sheet here so for the division i want to give the background color for the division i am giving the background color called uh, light green color or light coral color or light green color. for the divisions i am taking some light green background for the spans i am taking a light blue color background background color is a property for that i am just giving a light blue color background for that spans now we can able to understand where the divisions are occupying and we can able to understand where spans are going to be occupying like okay now let's go with the browser so what is the default browser here so that the edge now you see that two light light greens are there and three light blues are there but clumsy clumsy means uh, all the things are getting uh, um, adjustment there is no proper space between the element to element so that is the reason little bit uh, margin i want to provide for the division and division so i will give some margin for the first division margin for the first division is 5 pixel and margin for the span also margin means uh, outer space margin means outer space box to box some space for example this is one box and this is one box if these two boxes are like this there is no margin box and box some space is adjusting that is something outer space outer space is margin okay i'm just uh, assigning some margin for the divisions at the same time spans also then i can able to see and understand uh, where these two paragraphs are sorry where these uh, divisions are occupying and where the spans are occupying so now you see and observe uh, two divisions are occupying full width of the page am i right or wrong two divisions are occupying full width of the page so that is a why reason these two divisions are block level elements. now you can able to observe the spans span 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 hello hello how are you side by side in the same row these are taking it means what spans are what kind of elements inline elements divisions are what kind of elements block level elements let me take some headings and let me take some headings okay i will take multiple kind of elements i will take some headings h1 i am taking h1 uh, web development with uh, react and uh, python web development with react and python so for example for this h1 also i want to give some background color for this h1 also i want to give some background color what kind of background color you want you can provide it and uh, color of the element for this h1 color of the element is white color is text color and uh, padding oh, sorry margin for this also 5 pixel margin is some outer space i am just trying to adjusting some outer space for the h1 also okay now after that i am trying to adjusting some space for the h1 and that is the h1 which one means heading it's a bigger text right so web development with react and python that is basically there and i want to align the text center you can give the one more property for this text align center text align center if i say text align center that text is going to be aligned to center of the particular element okay everything is fine so divisions are block level headings are block level i try to understand paragraphs are block level or not paragraph let me take a paragraph after the h1 also let me take a paragraph with the lorem content lorem content lorem content is plain content uh, that is a dummy content 
you can take a paragraph also having some background color paragraph background color is some acquire mind okay so even paragraph also i want to take paragraph by default some margin is takes that is not an issue let me take a paragraph paragraph some paragraph is available even the paragraph also block level content okay you may you may think like sir paragraph is having a bunch of text paragraph is having a larger text that is the why reason it is taking uh, complete width of the page no you take a small text for the paragraph you take a small text for the paragraph you just take a just like a l o r e m or it is not having a bigger text even though it is not having the bigger text even though it is not having the bigger text it will occupy full width of the page it is not allowing another element to take in the same row it is not allowing another element to take in the same row for example if i take two paragraphs let me take two paragraphs here i am taking two paragraphs if it is inline element uh, p and p side by side right lorem and lorem in the same row but lorem and lorem it is not coming in the same row why because of this uh, this element paragraph element is also a block level. let me go with the images let me go with the images uh, i will show images image is a kind of uh, inline element img src img src let me load some images i have some image now one dot jpg in the local folder okay i taken some image here and uh, i will take uh, another image here sorry control c control v and this image is one dot uh, jpg and another image is Two dot jpg. Two images. I'm just taking. Two images. I'm just taking. If I'm taking two images like this, so can you see and observe? These two images are going to be side by side. But but one problem is there. One problem is there. What is the problem? What is the problem? These pans are in line. Again, images are in line. Let me get. Let me take a break here. After the pans, I'm taking a break. Just go and take a new line. All images are coming with the new line. Then automatically images are aligning from left. Okay, now these two images are there, but image uh, width is very bigger. I think uh, we are we are having the browser width uh, too much, uh, browser zoom zoom level too much. I'm just making browser zoom level hundred percent. Now, now you can see and observe both two images are side by side. Both images are side by side means so images are what kind of elements? In line. We try to understand. Okay. So, for example, if I take a uh, form inputs, if I take a form inputs, so let me take a break here. Let me take a break here. Let me take a form input. Input uh, type text. Uh, later we'll understand uh, what is the form element at all. Uh, enter your first name. This is a form element basically. And I will take uh, one more input. Input uh, type text. Uh, Place holder. Enter your last. Name. Enter your first name. Enter your last. I am taking two elements, two inputs. I am taking, and these two inputs also, these two inputs also come side by side. These two inputs also come side by side. It means what? Input elements are in line elements. So when you are when you are placing some element, which element is block level, which element is in line, you try to understand. Okay. Can I take some list items? Just try to understand. Try to understand. List item is inline or block level. Okay, let me take some order list. Okay, so inside order list, uh, let me have some list. Okay, so Apple and uh, Samsung. Apple, Samsung. I'm just taking a smaller list, smaller order list. Can I take one more order list? And after the input, can I take a break? Better we move to the next line, right? In the next line, I want to place uh, two order list here. When I take uh, two order list, order list is what? Order list. List item is what kind of element? Block. Yes, block level. List element is a block level. Am I clear? So let me take a simple smaller table. Whatever the table you want, you can take. So you can try to understand. Even ta tables, I don't know. Tables, I did not see any time. Table example. Table example. Let me copy the code. Every time, every time table. Don't write the code. You can take from W three schools. Go with the W three schools, and you can get the small code for the table. This is a small code, right? Just copy the code. 
copy the code of the table and let me take a break here again i am taking a break to understand how the table will one more table i am taking how many tables i am taking two tables i am taking so these two tables how these two tables are basically arranging on top of the screen how these two tables are actually arranging on top. okay tables are kind kind of block we, we clearly understand we clearly understand if it is in line it will like a new line the table is a block in this way you try to you try to keep all the elements and try to understand which element is block level element which element is inline element just try to understand this is a kind of intervention what is a block level element what is a kind of inline just a question for the question i am giving the answer for interview question this is a simple example now let me go with the one more topic attributes attributes okay in html every element every element have some predefined attributes and predefined attributes and no no not predefined attributes some mandatory attributes some mandatory attributes and optional attributes optional attributes okay mandatory attributes for example if i take image img for img src is mandatory for input uh, for input uh, type is mandatory for input type is mandatory mm. for a href is href is hyper reference is mandatory in this way you try to understand which attribute is mandatory compulsory without that attribute that element is not used but some attribute are optional so let me go some mandatory 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 attributes so i am just listing out all the mandatory attributes here and the optional attributes what are the optional attributes optional attributes okay optional attributes are something like width width is some optional attribute height is some optional attribute border is some optional attribute style is some optional attribute id is some optional attribute class is some optional attribute title is some optional attribute placeholder is some optional attribute value is some optional attribute name is some optional attribute so later you can able to understand all these attributes also when we are entering into the css we try to understand all the attributes when id will be used when class will be used when style will be used so when this when this border why this border yesterday we discussed about the table table have some border attributes and table also have some width and width attribute also we used and some elements some height attribute also there suppose i want to make fix the height then you need to give the height attribute also and id is the unique queue identifier for every element in javascript it is mandatory so then we can use id attribute class attribute basically recognizing the recognizing the elements using by the class name recognizing the elements using by the class name class is the specifier class is the specifier so you may have n number of classes per element okay one person have a number of nicknames one person have some n number of nicknames in the same way one element have number of classes so you can define a number of classes for a class so for your element so by this class name you can able to access the element into the css file the same time you can able to access the element into the javascript file also am i clear so that way you can go with the so there are multiple things not only this there are multiple can i go with some attributes now take new save it as attributes attributes dot next mm. let me go a is uh, a is there so a for a href is mandatory attribute or not okay for img now i am not giving any src so later you can place some src i'm just giving hash hash means something like empty so there is no image here so mandatory 
So these are the mandatory attributes I'm telling you about. Let me write some mandatory mandatory attributes. Just give the comment for this mandatory attributes. Hmm. Any other mandatory attributes? So for input, for example, input is a input to type is a mandatory attribute. Any value you have to provide for that. There are some optional attributes also. Optional attributes. Okay, what are the optional attributes? For example, okay, for the table, you can specify. For example, let me take a H1. H1 is there. Hello. For this H1, I want to provide a style at. For this H1, I want to provide some style at. Style attribute is optional attribute, but when you provide style attribute, I can able to specify some color or I can able to specify some background color. I can able to specify any CSS related property. So for the style, I want to provide some color red. If I say color red, if I say color red inside the style attribute, then you can see what is going to be happen. What is going to be happen for H1, a red color came. Yes. So using by the inline CSS, this is called actually inline CSS. Inline CSS means element by element, you can specify the style. Element by element, you can specify the style. So for this element, I am providing red color. For this element, I am providing green color. If I specify the, if I specify the CSS like this, if I specify the style attribute like this, I can able to use uh, CSS like this. Okay, for example, if I'm having a paragraph, hello, hello, this is a paragraph. Okay, this paragraph I want to access by the class name, class para. Or class para. What is the name of the what is the name of the class for the paragraph? So now the reference of this paragraph is now reference of this paragraph is para. Class class reference is para. So I want to access the para. I want to access the para means you have to go to the style sheet. Dot para. Class recognized using with the dots. Class recognized is in the style sheet using with the dots. So dot para, dot para I want to provide some color, color blue. Let's say blue. Let's say blue, blue. semicolon. CSS every property should end, should end it with a semicolon. So go with the semicolon. So now you can see the third one paragraph that was in the blue color. But here I'm using some optional attribute. Optional attribute means you may use this you may use this based on the requirement. You may use this based on the requirement. If requirement is there, you have to use it. If requirement is not there, nothing, no need. But the recommended attributes means uh, compulsory, these attributes are required. For hyperlink, definitely href, we need to provide. For image show, we need to give the SRC. For input, uh, uh, value enter, for whatever the value you want to enter, just to type is manual. So some attributes are recommended attributes. Some attributes are optional attributes. That is a simple concept you try to understand here. Okay, come to the point. Yeah, there is a one more attribute called a title. Let me provide the title attribute. So, hello, I am learning HTML. This is a title for the paragraph. So when this title can be recognized, when this title attribute can be recognized, when you hover on the paragraph, when you mouse over on the paragraph, some title is going to be shown. Some property is coming. That property is basically title of the paragraph. There is no, there is no proper use for this. But when you hover on the element, something it is going to be showing. Okay. When you hover on this, okay, this element is basically something. The title of the element, or the title of the element, you can able to go. But this is also optional. Title is optional. If you want, you can keep it. Otherwise. Am I clear about attributes? Kind of attributes. How many kind of attributes are there? Two types. The first kind of type, first kind is mandatory attributes. Second kind of attributes are optional attributes. Sometimes you can go with the mandatory attributes. Some mandatory attributes compulsory we have. But optional attributes, sometimes if you want, you can give. Otherwise, skip people skip.
come to the forms. Can I go with the forms now? Forms are important. And before that, I want to go to the iframes. Iframes. Iframes are inner frames. Iframes are inner frames. So when I want to when I want to show another another web page. Another web page in my web page. Iframes needed. Iframes needed. And iframe have an important attribute called SRC. Iframe have an important attribute called SRC. And one more thing is iframe is paired tag. Iframe is paired tag. And you need to mention one more important attribute called width of the iframe and height of the iframe also. These also required attributes here for us. Height you need to mention, width we need to mention. Can I go with some iframe? Just to save it, take new, save it as iframes dot. Okay, so let me let me take some YouTube video. Click on the share button, click on the embed button, and you can see iframe here. Can you see the iframe here? Click on the share button, click on the embed button. So this particular video with this iframe, you can able to utilize. So copy the iframe here, go to the browser, go to your web page and paste the. So I don't want all this uh, optional attributes. You can remove all the optional attributes, only SRC needed. Allow full screen, no one needed. And uh, this attribute, referral box, no needed. And uh, frame order, no needed. Title, no needed. Only SRC required, right? Title, no needed. You can remove all the attributes, unwanted attributes. Okay, so width, uh, let me make the width of the iframe is 300 pixel and height of the iframe let me go with auto auto means automatically based on the 300 pixel uh, it will take the default uh, height okay i got uh, video is unavailable so that is have some copyright so, okay so some content is not going to be showing with the iframes but some content is going to be showing by the iframes you can go like this so can I go with uh, one more thing? I want to show the iframe. So let me go with the iframe. Some some content is visible, some content is not visible, and remember it. SRC is equal to something. Width of the iframe is um, 300 pixel, and the height of the iframe is uh, auto. Now I want to show a Google.com here. Is it possible? I don't know. Let me check it out. Locked. Iframe is basically it is kind of a stolen. It is a kind of stolen thing. So people are not giving. Uh, that is having some high level security. Secured websites will not load in the iframes. Why? Because we are actually utilizing that website, that URL in my website. It is a problem. For example, you are creating a one one website. In your own website, you are actually showing the cricket uh, score with the cricketers, and you are actually giving the stocks in the one one iframe. You are showing the stocks. You are showing the cricket. You are showing the multiple things under. You are you are you are installing the others content in your website. You are actually streaming others content in your website. It is a problem. That is having some security. But when iframe needed under some kind of ads and all. For example. Uh, let me show. Uh, mm, I don't think so. 
Apple, Apple will allow it. So apple.com. Apple.com I'm taking here. This is also having S, uh, S means security. Apple also block. Sorry. Not recognizing, but some some websites you can able to see some content you can able to see you can just check it out. Okay, that is uh, basically iframe. Whenever it is used, whenever you are uh, going to be trying to keeping, for example, you are developing a real estate website. For the real estate website, you want to show the simple ad at the bottom of the page, so that ad always displays when they open your website. When they open a website, a trailer of the particular area trailer of the particular site you need to show that you can keep in the iframe that is the one thing let's come to uh, one more thing quotes there are two kind of quotes in html one is a block quote one is a short block quotes one is a short Block quotes, why we are using short quote by the Let me try to see a new program for this. I'm trying to keep in the new program and uh, quotations, quotes, dot HTML. Okay, so for block quote, there is a tag called block quote. Okay, so HTML is, hmm, what is a, what is a thing you want to show for this? Or, this is a block quote for the HTML. This is the block code for the HTML. Just uh, see that. It's a quotation, a stronger quotation for your for your content. A stronger quotation. For this block code, you can you can keep the different kind of styles. For example, I want to keep the block code in the underline. If you want, you can just go with the underline. So open underline tag and close underline tag after the block. And you can see that there is a block code. Then what is a short code? For example, I want to make a highlight the lorem. I want to highlight the lorem. So you can use the Q, Q tag. Q. When I specify the Q, Q is a short. Okay. What is the Q? What is the benefit of the Q? Small code. When you want to utilize the short quotations, you can use this. Okay, so block quote and short. Next, come to the forms. Important. When you come to real time, uh, real web application, uh, how many kind of forms you can recognize? How many kind of forms you can see, and how many form, how many kind of forms you can recognize? tell me? Mostly pop up form. Mostly pop up form is there. One more thing sign in, sign up, registration, registration, hmm. contact us. Okay, subscription, whatever. Subscription, same. Yeah, subscription. See, basically they are taking your details. They are taking your details. User is going to be trying to giving something to the web page. User is injecting some text. User is giving some value for the web page. That is actually form reads data from user. Form means always form is the importance. Importance of the form is read data from user or take data from user. Take inputs from user. What kind of inputs? It may be a text, it may be a check mark, it may be a radio option, it may be a selection. So there are multiple inputs users are giving. Those inputs are captured by the forms. Forms are captured. More important, forms are captured. User inputs. 
forms are captured user entries. So later through the JavaScript, what is the captured data I want to do? What is the benefit of the captured data? When you capture some data, you may need to send to the server. You may need to store into the database. So that is the later part. Later part in the JavaScript, whatever the data I captured by the value property, I need to store this data into the database. I need to uh, formation this data into the JSON part and need to send to the server and need to store it to the database. That is the later part we can go with. And one more important thing, forms have, forms have default, default validations from HTML. From HTML. From HTML, we can able to give the default validations. Okay, forms have forms have custom validations. Custom validations from Java script. Important. Forms have default validations from HTML. Forms have custom validations from JavaScript. One more thing. Forms have forms have custom events from JavaScript. Events means, for example, if you want to click into the input, when you click on the input, I want to fire one event. When you click outside of the input, I want to fire one event. When you, when you check the check mark, I want to fire one event. When you deselect the check mark, you need to fire one event. When you select the radio button, you need to fire one event. When you deselect the radio button, you need to fire one more event. When you click on the button, you need to fire one event. When you when you click on the drop down button, you need to fire one event. There are multiple events which are going to be available. We will see all the events of the forms in the JavaScript. When I come to the JavaScript, I will tell whatever the events which are available for the different different events. We have to do a lot of assignments on that in JavaScript. But in HTML, there are some predefined validations are there. Those validations I will show in HTML. But when I come to the JavaScript, there are some other kind of validations. For example, uh, this box only allows capital letter. And this box only need to allow small letter. And this box need to allow only eight characters, a minimum eight characters, for example, eight to 16 characters. And this box need to have one special character and this box need to have including of uh, capital letters, special characters, numbers. Some kind of when, when you are um, when you are creating a password, there are some rules and regulations. Basically, you you go with the Facebook, you go with the Twitter, you go with the different other kind of websites. They're asking you, uh, please, please create a password using by the following guidelines. They are giving some guidelines for you. So based on the guidelines, you need to create your password. Otherwise, they will not recognize. Am I clear? So those those custom validations you can able to work with the JavaScript. JavaScript is very huge. JavaScript is available on top of the HTML, a very huge level. We have to work on a lot of things in JavaScript. Come to the part. Okay. Can I go with the HTML forms now? Okay. One more important point. Uh, note uh, forms are creating with. Forms are creating with uh, form tag, form open, and the form open and form close. Form open and form close. And one more thing, forms have multiple, multiple kind of inputs. Multiple kind of inputs. Input have a lot of types. Input have multiple types. Okay, so let me write the types. Type text. Type text. Type uh, password. Type text. Type password. Type uh, radio. Type uh, checkbox. Type uh, submit. Type uh, date. Type uh, date and time. Type uh, color, 
type a email, type a number, type a button, type a reset, type a number I give you. Okay, there are multiple types we have. Okay, we will we will see the documentation. Okay, type search is there. Okay, there are multiple kind of types which are available. So when we see the documentation, you can able to understand what are the different kind of input types which are available. We try to do practice on different kind of types also. Okay, so later we try to understand. And one more important attribute for the forms. Forms have some important attributes. What are the attributes for the forms? The one is type. Another one is placeholder. One more thing is value. And one is name. When name is used, when value is used, when placeholder is used, I will tell you. And uh, that's all enough. Let's go. Let's go and uh, walk with the simple form now. New check form dot. Can I go with the sign in form? Sign in underscore form. Sign in form dot. Okay. Form. Before this, I want to give some heading up. Huh? Heading means uh, to sign. Hmm. Form needs some input, sir. Input type text placeholder user enter user enter self close and one more is input. Type password. Placeholder. Enter. Your password. Already and username is there. Password is there. Just you are you are working with the sign in. You are working with the sign. -in. Then one more thing. Input. Type submit. Submit uh, require a value. Important. When you have submit type value is matter. When you have type submit, value is mandatory. Value is the name of the particular. And when you have the type submit, it is a kind of button. It is a kind of button. It is not uh, entered value. It is not a box with empty. It is entered value. Sorry, already entered value. Value should be value. So what is the value for this? Sign. Sign. Just save and uh, run the program. Save and run the program. Hmm. Sign in form is there, but not look and feel good. Not look feel good. Okay, so I can able to enter some username and I can able to enter some password. It is it is giving dots or not? And click on sign. So sign in is going to be up. Okay, but the one important thing I want to I want to keep this one into the center of the screen. I'm just making some design this form. Look, feel good. Okay, so this particular. Let me keep all this thing into the division. Division is a container we know. We know division now. What is the division? It's a it's a block. It's a block. Block of the multiple elements. Division is a container. It is a bucket. Inside the division, I have the heading. Inside the division, I have a form. But this division, I will write a style sheet. Can I write a style sheet for the division? Okay, division. Division take uh, width 50% uh, of the screen. For division, I'm telling style is called. Uh, so, style sheet, I want to mention first. Inside the style, uh, Inside the style, I want to mention the division related properties. Division related properties. Division, uh, width of the division should be 
fifty percent of the screen, and the text align set. Now you can see the same output. Uh, it is going to be uh, simply like this. Okay, so this division should have some background color now. Let me take some background color for the division. Background color for the division should be uh, aquar mine. And let me give the padding. Padding is the inner space. Can I give 10 pixel for the padding? And uh, border radius. Border radius, I'm giving 10 pixel and 40 pixel then yeah. it looks it looks like a simple thing like this a sign in form i'm just giving a border radius like this 10 pixel is taking here and here 40 pixel is taking here and here so later we will understand in css why i'm giving two values what are the importance of this two? okay so this sign in form is there but username and password uh, line by line so how i need to show Username and password line by line. Username and password line by line, I want to get out to show. Can I go with the BR? BR, right? So take a BR here. Take a BR here. Now you can see. Inputs also, I want to take some margin. Input also, I want to take some space. Okay, just give some style for the inputs. Input also, I need to give some margin. So margin, how much you want? All inputs, I'm just giving some margin. Sign in form is there. And sign in form, that is something like heading, Abhi. What is that? H2. Without, without CSS, uh, HTML is ugly. Remember it. Third CSS HTML is ugly. Am I right or wrong? I don't know. On violet white is there or not? It should be look feel good or not. Okay. Small border is there now. Again, again, I can I can specify some radius for this. Put it down. Three pixel and put it down. Even carrozzi down. Better. Okay. Fine. Something. Okay. Now let me go with the validation. Without entering the username, I cannot move forward. Without entering the username, I cannot move forward. It means, uh, it means uh, username is compulsory required attribute. Password also required. So remember, remember all these properties and attributes. Now, refresh. Click on sign in. Default validation from HTML. HTML also have some predefined validation. See, I'm not writing any JavaScript right now. Am I writing any JavaScript here? Clear. But something, some pop-up is coming. Without entering your username, I cannot go for sign in. Submit option is not working. So enter some username, something like so. Now click on sign in. Mm, still. Still it is not moving forward. It means password also mandatory. Oh my God. So yes, enter some password, then only sign. Okay. The password needed something, something until then you have to write some JavaScript. Password requires some letters and numbers uh, combination and password needs some special characters needed and password length is like this. 
than some JavaScript metadata. That much validations, so a huge validations we can provide from JavaScript. Some basic validations you can give from HTML attributes itself. So in part of HTML, we will discuss about the basic attributes or predefined attributes from HTML. But when I come to the JavaScript, I will explain recommended attributes or a lot of custom attributes from the JavaScript. Okay, so that is enough uh, so far now.